Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's the one that over show. You know, Ken Spence didn't realize I still had him on my hat, but I like how it looks in the video, so uh, I'm gonna keep it on. Little cocktail, no, I'm gonna take it off. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, we want to continue our series um, on the what, the why, the how of song service, and we uh, spoke in the last video. We had spoken on um, uh, a wide variety of topics, and so I wanted to uh, kind of touch on certain things again. Now, if we go back to Ephesians five and 19 the bible again it says 5 and 19 it says speaking to yourselves in psalms hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart in colossians 3 16 it also says something very similar um and of course that goes back to the the, the purpose the why in terms of what we're doing this for this is to um encourage and edify one another speaking to ourselves in psalms hymns spiritual songs um, this also does speak to the what in terms of how we do it. And I want to kind of harp on that today because the what and the how are kind of intertwined. They're all kind of intertwined, but the what and the how are intertwined in terms of how or what you what is used to lead song service. And I know that I have a wide variety of song leaders that may be looking at this, and so I'm going to uh, cover this. And perhaps even after this video, you might just stop watching altogether, and that's perfectly fine. Um, know that I love you. I'm still here for you. I'll answer any question you have. Um, I'm not here to get into Bible debates. Um, if you want to get into a Bible debate, we can, you know, chat and we can discuss. We can, I'm not going to debate you, we can discuss this thing. Um, but that is not the intent of this uh, channel, that is not the intent of this video. And so, you know, uh, but dealing with a wide variety of individuals who we serve with this video series, um, we know that there are um, some individuals from various parts of the country, various parts of the world, um, that do sing and do uh, worship, uh, that are members of the Church of Christ, that are learning and looking to become... Uh, better at song leading and I do want to um, uh, jump in and this is not going to be a short video um, but I do want to kind of jump into some things dealing with the psalms, the hymns, and the spiritual songs um, these uh, the song book shouldn't, you shouldn't be just restricted to the song book first and foremost I want to throw that out there, you shouldn't be just restricted to the song book um, the reason I say that is that there are some songs that are not in the book that people have known for years and they'll never forget. One of them is Hard Fighting Soldier. Um, it's sung various ways. Uh, I want to let you know you're not tied specifically to a song book, first and foremost. I also want to let you know you're not tied specifically to an arrangement of a song. You're also not tied to a tempo of a song. Now, mind you, at the congregation that you might be like, those three, th three things may be important. But uh, me, myself, I actually have an issue uh, sometimes where I'll walk into a congregation, forget where I'm at, start leading, and it's a whoa. Hold up, kid, lead like that. Or if I lead and they take it well, okay, cool. But sometimes I'll have to stop. Let's start over uh, because they're not used to it. Uh, some examples would be um, something that's not in the song book, right? Uh, Lord, prepare me a, a sanctuary. But if you go to certain congregations, it's not in a song book, but the way they sing it, the tempo is different. So the tempo is, oh Lord, prepare me a sanctuary. But you see how the differences are there. Still good, no matter which way you go. Um, even within the song book, and as I say that, I'm going to grab uh, the song book real quick. But um, like, uh, my goodness, and I, I, I hope I can remember where it's at but there are certain songs that some people might be tied to uh, and and I, I want to let you know you're not tied as a song leader to sing something a particular way every single time and that's not to say oh well, switch it up every time you're up there no that's not that's not true um, however we do want to be uh, cognizant of where we are we want to be uh, cognizant of what we're doing and cognizant of the fact, will this edify or won't it? So, for instance, um, a song, Heavenly Sunlight. Walking in sunlight all of my journey Over the mountains, through the deep vale Jesus has said, I'll never forsake thee Promise divine that never can fail 
heavenly. You see what I'm saying? Now there's another arrangement. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountains through the deep veil. Jesus has said I'll I'll never forsake thee, a promise divine that I never can feel, a heavenly sunlight, oh heaven, you see what I'm saying? Just the difference right there is like, oh, well, well there's a difference, but it's, it's not how we normally sing it, and that can cause problems. But you want to be cognizant. You're not tied to that. I'll give you another example. This is a communion song. Now, this is the way I always sing this song. I've never uh, sung it because uh, you want the words to hit the individual. Um, but uh, the song goes, There's a fountain free, tis for you and me. Let us haste, oh haste, to the brink. A tis a fount of love from the source above, and he bids us all freely drink. Will you come to the fountain? That ain't how I do. So when I, I've always sung the song, it's, uh, 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 I would start out again. There's a fountain free, tis for you and me. Let us haste, oh haste, to the brink. Tis a fount of love from the source. Ah, uh, but you get the idea, right? So it 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 it. You're not tied to this. You're not tied uh, to uh, the, the the praise for long song book. Um, you can use the Psalms now. This is kind of fun. Only because there are some songs like uh, the lectureship. mid Atlantic lectureship was this week in Philadelphia at Overbrook Park. Man, it was a great event. Um, one song leader, Brother Mark, got up the great guy, a great song leader, and he sung something that I was just like, man, that was that was that was that was really you know hidden. And and the thing is, I had actually saw that, but in a song book, I had never seen it. Uh, well, and shame to say, I had never read that song, or I might have read over it, but I didn't remember it. And he goes, so everybody, open, well, let's open your Bible. And on Psalms 25, and he goes, okay. And he's just doing, the, he didn't just do the first two verses. He actually did all of, uh, or most of the, the verses. But, unto thee, O Lord, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul, do I lift up my soul, unto thee, O Lord, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul, do I lift up my soul, Oh my God, oh my God, I will trust in Thee, I will trust in Thee. Let me not be ashamed, let not my enemies triumph over me. And he would go to each verse. Uh, let none that wait on Thee, let none that wait on Thee uh, be ashamed, be ashamed. The chorus was pretty much verse number two, but he was using verse one and verse three, and it, it was just beautiful how he did it, and it was just using literally psalms, because <laughs> we were singing hymns, and we were singing spiritual songs, and he, psalms, it was like, wow, and then, but there is a, a song that I'd been singing for years, and truth be told, um, I had read it, and I would realized many years ago, oh, this is actually a psalm, it was just the first verse of Psalm 27, and just the first part of it, actually, uh, but it goes, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Or whom shall I fear? Whom shall I salvation 
whom shall I fear? So you can use the Psalms themselves. You can use uh, uh, there's what's that song? It's uh, it's actually everybody knows the song now. It's it's been on the radio forever. Um, what's the song? Um, no weapon formed against me. And I'm singing a different rhythm. But y'all know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper in that scripture as well. And we have the ability to sing this and these and whatever song book you got and whatever spiritual have been there and whatever song that someone uh, sings and creates. Oh, hold up. We never thought about it. But yeah, we have the ability to do that. Sylvia Rose has just been a fantastic, uh, just a, 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 a gospel She's awesome. I just say that. She she just has an incredible ability. Mancha Roma Crown, she wrote that. I believe Call Him Up, she wrote that. I believe Jesus Shall Wipe Away All Tears, she wrote that. And, and it's just, just beautiful songs that she wrote in her lifetime, and she's still alive, that she wrote in her lifetime and gave it to the church. Well, I mean, you had to pay for it, but I mean, she gave it to the church, you know, and we sing all of those songs, you know. Uh, what's his name? Ron, um, Ron, Ron Walker, who uh, wrote the song Heavens on the Other Side. I mean, just incredible individuals that have just contributed. And that, no, we don't have to sing, though, we can create. And, and that's where, you know, we want to make sure it's God word in focus, you know, because some songs are, they sound good, but they're not God word in focus. And that's just being 100% honest with it. Um, but we, we have that ability uh, just to do that. And so I, I just want to share with you, those are the things you want to sing. And again, like I said, this video was not going to be short. And it's not going to be shorter. I'm actually going to keep on going because there is something that I did want to talk about. Um, uh, as we talked about various things that certain congregations may have or may not have. Um, one of the things, we're getting into the, the and like I said, that was kind of the what and the how. We're going to do more what than how. But we're going to kind of glance at the how in reference to the what. Um, and like I said, this, if I didn't say it in this video, I've said it in another video. The intent of this video, this channel, this series is not to cause division or to cause debate or to be a debate channel. But you can say that to your blue in the face and people will always want to debate. One of the things that, um, and I kind of said this on the intro video, one of the things that's happened within the Church of Christ uh, nationwide is we have, a, uh, we have multiple song leaders. Um, not just one after the other, but at the same time. Um, we have song leaders that uh, just sing bass, some called the bass mic. Um, what's happened is that we have, uh, and I'm in, in speaking to certain brethren, what happened was there used to be song practices, but not just practicing songs, but where song leaders would actually, or groups would actually get together. Not groups, but uh, groups of individuals within the congregation. So uh, the men would always, uh, you know, the men who wore basses or baritones or what have you, they would always sing bass and baritone and they were proud to sing it. And that's kind of died off. Um, and so what has happened is uh, leadership at various congregations have instituted what is uh, what has been called the bass mic. Um, but um, I view it as more of the bass song leader because at every congregation that I've been to, uh, the bass song leader or the bass mic that individual has always been leading the basses because he'll start and the basses follow um, because the song leader who's up there might not always be bass qualified or be able to hold a, a, that note strong enough and so they they do what they do and it and it works out and it's it's been well received and it's it's a, a good aid to the congregation um, there are those who would uh, detract from that there are those that uh, uh, um, and I'm not like I said. This is not to get into a debate or to an argument. Um, there is uh, one um, thought or one idea uh, that's uh, prevalent in many churches of Christ nowadays, where they actually have like um, a praise team, and you know, just for I mean, we call it a praise team, but it's a group of song leaders, the worship 
leading team or the song leading team um, where one person is leading the song and the other person is leading the bass and the other person might be leading the sopranos and the of course the thought is oh well that's just a choir that's just a choir and a choir is something separate because here's the truth of the matter um, we ain't come up with choirs so I mean it, it's, it's something separate they do things separate and apart and that leads me to a point um, let me finish this point on the uh, the extra song leaders if you will um, so long as it is expedient in leading the people in worship service have at it um, for the individuals who might be against that and, and I know one uh, group of individuals they always cite first Corinthians 14 and they talk about in church and they often will say well you know it, it doesn't make sense for us to do that um, and they'll go and they'll say it's sin and they cite first Corinthians 14 to state that it's sin and um, interestingly enough in looking at first Corinthians 14 it's it, it, it's amazing um, sometimes how individuals might look at scripture and not look at all of scripture um, or look at it within the full-on context and I know this is gonna sound harsh and I know some people want to fight and I don't want to fight I, I, I love you no matter what it is you can agree with me you can disagree with me I love you regardless of what you might say um, but uh, verse 26 of uh, 1 Corinthians 14 how is it then brethren when you come together every one of you has a psalm every one of you has a doctrine every one of you has a tongue every one of you has a revelation every one of you has an interpretation let all things be done unto edifying now let's be clear on something because the, the, the problem with explanations on things is that when we get into explanations on things uh, we sometimes will view it and we'll say it and we don't think about the whole picture of what we just said and there is an argument out there that this scripture, now you must understand, uh, verse 26 where it says, How is it that when you come together, this is everybody, this is uh, uh, an assembly, a worship assembly, uh, every one of you has a psalm, that's a song to sing. So that would be the song leader, or that would be song, everybody got a song to sing. Everybody has a teaching to teach, that's a doctrine. Everybody has a tongue, now that was the person speaking in an inspired language, they're sitting in a... Corinthian audience and they speak Greek but all of a sudden someone speaks Chinese and it's like okay well you speak Chinese you speak Japanese well we're gonna speak at the same time and it's like whoa, 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 whoa that's that's just a confusing mess and the issue was precisely what I said now the argument was that it should be done one at a time the issue in the context right there looking at the grammar of the situation the issue right there in first Corinthians 14 is not that everyone had one to say or that they all were saying it at the same, saying the same thing at the same time. Because if we're saying the same thing at the same time, that's not confusion. As a matter of fact, if it's specifically about a psalm, which would have been a song back then, if it's specifically everybody had the same song that they're singing at the same time, that's not confusion. Because if it's confusion, then we in the worship assemblies today could not sing the same song when the song leader leads the one song. Do you get that? So the understanding is if they're leading in one song, then it's one song. The issue we were having in Corinth, or the issue, yes, the issue we, the Church of Christ, was having in Corinth in 1 Corinthians 14 was everybody was speaking at once. It was a confusing mess because when you understand how the language is formulated, it's all five different things at the same time. I'm going to talk about math. I'm going to talk about English. I'm going to talk about grammar. I'm going to talk about spelling. I'm going to talk about, and it's it's all one confusing mess. This needs to be edifying. So the person who's speaking in tongues, he need that interpreter. If the interpreter ain't there, he need to keep his mouth closed. That's where it's, okay, both of these have to be, you know, so that's, that's dealing with that. Because, you, you know, just because certain arguments are just, you know, it's like, okay, if, let's be whole and let's present the argument to the fullest extent. Let's not be so contextual that we stop context and not go all the way through with getting into the language of the context because then we confuse everybody. And this whole argument of praising how you praise, how I praise, and how they praise. Oh, well, everybody won't praise their own way. No, nah, it's not to say that. We have to do things decently and in order. Now, if we're going to sing a four-part harmony, now, if we're going to do a four-part harmony, if we want to do a four-part harmony and we want to do it right, there are individuals who will go up and at certain congregations and what they'll do before they'll sing, they'll pick up and they'll, they'll put, uh, sing into a pitch pipe. I actually have a pitch pipe on my phone. Um, on my phone and I 
can use it, I, I choose not to use it because every time I get up there, I ain't necessarily going to get up there and sing the same. The, the, there's a reason I might elevate the note or not, I, you know, but I mean, there are individuals who use a pitch by to make sure, okay, well, I'm going to sing this and you're on point, now you're on point, now you're on point, now you're on point. And it's like, well, you, you, you know, we, we, there's nothing wrong with, you know, him blowing to get his note so that he can give the note. Okay, so it's, it's, we've become so divided on simple issues. You as the song leader, I don't want you to be divided on the simple issues. Now, tradition is where frustration comes in. Traditionally, men wear suits when they go to church. Everybody in, 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 in a suit, shirt, and a tie. But you might go to a congregation where it's golf shirts and khakis, or it's jeans and flannel. Do you go there, you're in sin? No. We just do things decently in order. And as a part of Romans 14, we respect one another in love. I think we're missing that so much. So I want you as a song leader to realize everything you do as a song leader is to be done in love. Because if love is not a part of it, then we got a problem. We have a huge problem if love is not a part of it. Now, I, 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 I want to go a little further. Um, there's the argument on clapping, and there are individuals who, who uh, like to get into the clapping argument, and, and I've, I found it very interesting, um, one argument that is more pervasive now. Um, I, I'll, I'll say that sometimes you might go to a congregation and they don't clap at all. I mean, they don't give applause, so they don't clap at all in worship service, and I can respect them. And love should amount. You should respect them, too. You might go to a congregation where they do nothing but where they clap for everything. Love should abound. You should respect them as well. Because this isn't about hating someone because of something. But I do want to go to a scripture. In Romans 15. Romans, the chapter is 15. Verse 11. And the point I want to get to with this scripture. Uh, the Apostle Paul is writing to the congregation at Rome, and in writing to the congregation at Rome, he is writing to them, dealing with uh, divisions among them, because this was a mixed congregation, mixed racially, honestly. You had uh, uh, Hebrew individuals or Jewish people, and you had Roman citizens or Roman uh, individuals, and so they were, there, there was a lot of stuff going on. There were those who were saying, listen, you need to observe everything about Judaism, um, in order to come to Christ, and there were those saying, no, we don't, no, well, you need to stop doing those things, or you can't come to Christ, and they would restrict one another, based on certain practices, or certain holidays, or holy days that they would look at, and, 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 and so, Paul has to write on them about differences, and Romans 14, I encourage you to read Romans 13 and 14, uh, I encourage you to read that. Romans 15 now, what we see, is that this group, He's explaining something, but the way he Paul is explaining it is he's quoting scripture in scripture. What I mean, Romans 15 and verse 11 is, and again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. Now, the scripture that he is actually quoting is Psalm 117 and verse 1. Now, the psalm is only two verses long, but I want to read it to you. Now, this is King James I'm reading from. But Psalm 117 is, Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. Now, we have the Psalm 117. This is the same Bible. Praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. 15 and 11. And again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles. Lord and laud him, all ye people. Well, hold up. Did Paul change scripture? No. See, what you have to understand is Paul is a rabbi. Paul was a rabbi. Uh, as we used, as he was known as Saul when he was uh, killing Christians, um, Saul was a rabbi. He was a Pharisee. He knew the Scripture in and out and backwards. What we see, though, from what Paul says, the Scriptures actually match up, and I'm going to explain why. When we examine what Paul wrote, the language in which Paul wrote, Paul wrote in what is known as Koine or Kone Greek, which is a common form of Greek. But he spoke very distinctly. And because he spoke very distinctly, 
he uh, spoke two words, and I'm going to read the scripture again, in, um, not Psalms, but uh, in Romans 15, 11. And he, he spoke very matter-of-factly, matter in, and again, I want you to keep this in your mind, and again, praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. Now in the Old Testament, 117, it says praise and praise. That first praise is translated the Greek word, aineo which means to praise, to, to, to lift God up, to praise, raise praise towards heaven, praise. But that second praise, or that second word in, if you're King James, laud. If you're English Standard Version, it might be extol. If you're NIV, I believe it says praise. All three words in the, that Romans 15, 11, all three words refer, or all three of those words refer to the second uh, word, which is ep. I neo. Now, I said I neo, and then I said epi neo. Now, what I want you to grasp is there is a part of the word that's the same in both. I neo is in epi neo. So praise is a part of what's happening here. But what we gather from epi neo is something a little bit deeper. We find the word laud related to it, which is why the King James translators put it in here. Laud. So, in looking at it, what we see is, what does the word laud mean? Now, here's the truth of the matter. You've seen the word laud before. You have. You've just seen it a part of another word. You've seen laud, but you saw A-P-P -P in front of it. Applaud. Yes, laud and applaud are related and mean, in fact, the same thing. Because we're looking at King's English here. So, is it a sin to clap? Absolutely not. Here's the thing, though. Individuals will say, well, the Bible doesn't explicitly say it. Well, the problem is we have, we're reading English when we should be reading Greek. What, you would, what, what, what every, every preacher would love to have, what every Bible school teacher would love to have, at, at least that, I, that I've met, would love to have is all of us being able to understand Hebrew and Greek. So that when we go through the Bible, we can say, oh man, that's what it says. That's why your preacher always says, the Greek says, the Hebrew says, because he has to go back there because sometimes, sometimes the English is lacking. Well, Ken, what you mean by that? Perfect example. At the end of the uh, uh, Gospel of John, Jesus says to Peter, um, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, yes. He said, feed my sheep. Again, he said, Peter, do you love me? And I'm summarizing. He said, yeah. He said, feed my lambs. And then he says, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, yeah, you know I love you. Do you love me? Now, what happened? The English, why did he ask him the same question three times? I want you to understand he asked him the same question two times and asked him a different question the third time. What? The first two times Jesus said, do you love me? The word love refers to agape, unconditionally. Do you love me unconditionally? The third time he said, phileo. Whoa, that's brotherly. Are you my dog? Are you my homie? But see, love in English covers all of those. Whereas in the Greek, there are specific loves, specific words for specific types of love. It's important, very important. How important? Very important. 60, I believe, I believe, and I could be wrong on this, the Bible in and of itself between the Hebrew, between the Greek, I believe it's like 60,000 uh, individual words used, some used over and over again, like the, of course, uh, in Greek is ho, but uh, H-O, um, but like certain words used over, but individual words, but when we get to, uh, when we get to English, it's reduced to roughly 6,000 words, or somewhere, I think it's, I think it's between, it might be 8,000 words, I could be wrong on that, but it's reduced, so sometimes we got to go beyond the English to see what was really said. So the reason I'm sharing all of this is because you have a task ahead of you, song leader. Because your focus should be praising the Lord. Your focus should be loving your brother. Those two focuses, those two focuses have to be always present first. Because if they're not, you might walk in, get ready to sing a song, and be filled, your spirit just change. And we talked about that in the last video. Your spirit just mad at this kind of good because they don't know how to do Why they ain't clap? And what ends up happening is you destroy worship service. It is not edifying. 
and it's a shame. And unfortunately, that does happen. I don't want you to be in that position. So God bless you, God keep you. Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel. As I said, this channel is designated to mentor, to train, to help, and to grow the new song leader, the rookie song leader, the veteran song leader, the intermediate song leader. But this is just designed to be a help for you. Um, God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.